Hello, everyone. It is June the 8th, 2022. It's day zero here of the not E3 2022 coverage. We got a bunch of news. We got a little bit to talk about uh, regarding Monday's news and uh, whatever else is going on. So let's uh, go ahead and get to it. Hey there. Nice to see. I didn't see you. At, uh, well, how's I don't I don't know how I'm going to sit. That's the issue. That's the issue with it. It's whatever. It's whatever. We're just it's not going to be centered. OK, it's just how it is. It's how it's going to go. Hey, on Monday, we uh, we did one of the, the things you're not supposed to do is a uh, is a YouTuber. And that's have clickbait fucking thumbnails. Um, just want to issue an apology for that uh, because our thumbnail at the time was that we were covering the Jeff Gersman story. And within the actual show, we did not mention Gersman's name. Uh, that news broke during the show. At the time of recording, and at the time of releasing the VOD, there wasn't anything to say. And so we put it out there on the thumbnail, thought it was going to be all right. And then the story kind of moved forward and uh, people obviously saw that in their sub boxes and wanted uh, more information and it just wasn't in the video. So I apologize, that's on us. The video has uh, since been changed, both thumbnail and title. And this video might actually feature that. Uh, spoilers, I don't actually know what the title of the videos and the thumbnails are gonna look like when we record these. So might be that, might be something else. I don't know, but hey, at least we have an update on the Jeff Gersman story. Let's begin with the news. Jeff Gersman left Giant Bomb. He got the news on Monday. He's launching a new podcast. It's called The Jeff Gersman Show. It's a podcast about video games. Crazy, right? Jeff Gersman continuing to talk about video games. Uh, at time of writing, there's been no clarification on the reason why Jeff and Giant Bomb decided to go their separate ways. But while Jeff has left, Giant Bomb has revealed that former Giant Bomb staff member Dan Reichert uh, will be returning to the site full time as its new creative director. He goes on to say, quote, I'm back full time at Giant Bomb as creative director. Thanks, Dan. Uh, he tweeted that. Uh, and he goes on to say, I can't wait to start making a whole bunch of fun, dumb shit again. Uh, Jeff has also created a patron uh, or a Patreon, as it should be said. Uh, I think when I last checked in, it was about 35, 3,800 patrons. Might even be more now. Uh, it's going quite well. What are they, uh, you know, becoming patrons to? I don't know. The Jeff Gersman experience. He doesn't really know. He seems to be making it in real time. There was a full uh, stream yesterday where he kind of talked about it and recorded episode one. And he didn't really say anything about what happened. He said a bunch of uh, kind of depressing statements about uh, his work life and all that stuff. But he seems to be doing, you know, better now. It's good. It's good. I highly recommend going and watching that if you've been a Gersman fan at all. Uh, for me, he's been uh, honestly one of my heroes since I kind of got into the industry uh, at large. And so is it sad to see him leave Giant Bomb? Yeah, he kind of started that thing. Uh, I figured he would burn that house down. But now we get a new Gersman. He seems reinvigorated. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens with that. Maybe he'll start interviewing Phil Spencer. Maybe Phil Spencer will go out and help Jeff clean his garage. I don't know. Some of you might be wondering who Jeff Gersman is. Well, I'll let you do the research on that. We're going to move forward with JPNN. The ESA has claimed that E3 will return in 2023. They came out and said, quote, we're excited about coming back in 2023 with both a digital and an in-person event. That came from ESA president and CEO Stan Pierre Louis or Lewis or Lewis. Uh, this was in a Washington post interview. He goes on and quote, as much as we love these digital events and as much as they reach people and we want that global reach, we also know that there's a really strong desire for people to convene, to be able to connect in person and see each other and talk about what makes games great. Do we actually think they're going to be back next year in person? I wouldn't have said yes two weeks ago, but after speaking with uh, a bunch of developers, 
on a uh, recent work trip, I kind of do. I feel like the industry, uh, you know, needs an event like that. Will it be the ESA a year from now? It could be. Will it be someone else? It might be as well. I really don't know. Uh, but I do think an event like that needs to occur for the industry, not so much for consumers and, uh, you know, people that rewatch uh, or rather watch press conferences for those, uh, those big reveals. I do think there's going to be some sort of in-person event, though. Might not be the ESA. We'll just have to see. Saudi Arabia has purchased a $1 billion stake in Embracer Group. They've acquired 8.1% of the company's shares following the deal's completion. The country's public investment fund, PIF, uh, through its subsidiary, Savvy Gaming Group, will be the second largest owner of the Embracer Group shares. In a statement, Embracer founder and group CEO Lars Wingforce said, quote, Savvy Gaming Group's investment of $1 billion enables us to continue executing our strategy proactively from a position of strength across the global gaming industry. Over the past few years, Saudi-based uh, Saudi entities have become one of the most significant investors in the global gaming market. And the games market uh, in MENA is one of the world's fastest growing with $5.7 billion in 2021 revenues as uh, more active gamers than either the US or Western Europe. Uh, quote, the largest country in this market by far is Saudi Arabia. And having visited Saudi Arabia, I have seen the gaming community and the opportunities firsthand. Our relationship with Savvy Gaming Group uh, will enable us to set up a regional hub in Saudi Arabia from which we will be able to make investments across the MENA region, either organically via partnerships, joint ventures, or via acquisitions of companies led by strong entrepreneurs. I hate that word. No one, try to say that, try to say it right now. You're not going to get it right the first time. See, I, you just, you fucked up. It didn't. Kotaku spoke with 10 former employees of Bethesda and its parent company, Zenimax Media, who are familiar with Fallout 76's development, all of whom shared their accounts only under the condition of anonymity. Sources say that Fallout 76 was a product of brutal crunch, technical difficulties, mismanagement, and poor leadership. One former developer on Fallout 76 said, quote, the amount of people who would go to that project and then they would quit Bethesda was quite high. Two former testers rec uh, recounted that one of their colleagues said in a QA group chat after leaving the project, quote, I didn't cry last night when I was taking a shower. Another said in the same chat, I pulled into work today and I sat in my car for a second and my chest didn't feel heavy like it normally does. Multiple sources uh, Kotaku spoke with had said they crunched on various other ZeniMax published games such as Dishonored 2, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, Skyrim, and Fallout 4. That might be, it goes in the, in the top. I wouldn't say it's the most depressing thing we've ever read on the show, uh, but it's definitely up there. Blizzard still takes the cake across the board. Capcom has announced a Capcom Showcase, a new live stream digital event bringing you the latest Capcom information. It's scheduled on June 13th, 3 p.m. Pacific, per Capcom uh, as their tweet. Uh, the showcase will be, quote, for around 35 minutes of news and in-depth updates on previously announced Capcom titles. Capcom today. There, do we have any more news reporters here? Is that is that my wife, the reporter? He's on the phone. <laughs> Capcom confirmed today that Resident Evil 4 remake will be in the showcase. I also tuned in to Maximilian Dude last night, who is a streamer here on Twitch.tv, and uh, he was talking about how he's going to be playing Street Fighter 6 this Friday at an event. So. I bet you we'll see some actual gameplay footage of Street Fighter VI come this Capcom event, most likely. Will we see Dragon's Dogma 2? That's what I really want to see. That's the game that I really want to check out. I hope it's there in some form. We'll be covering all of the Capcom event footage that they show on Drop Frames Live, so make sure to tune in to that. South Korean game developer NCSoft has announced 
Project M. We watched it yesterday on Trailer Time if you want to check out the trailer. It's an interactive narrative game that is shaped by player choices. The game is developed uh, on Unreal Engine 5 and will release on console platforms. It's aiming for ultra-realistic graphics and it's set in Korea. Definitely go check that trailer out. It, uh, it actually looks kind of cool. Looks interesting, to say the least. Yesterday, Bend Studio revealed its new logo with uh and with it they announced their new project it stated in the playstation blog post quote we are currently working on a new ip that includes multiplayer and builds upon the open world systems of days gone but brings you a whole new world that we are extremely excited to craft for you am i excited about that i don't know let me know in the chat if you think days gone was a good game because i struggled to tell you it was Earlier today, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 trailer premiered. Along with it came updated data for the franchise. Call of Duty has now generated over $30 billion in revenue. Holy shit. Over 425 million Call of Duty premium games have sold life to date. Good God. Over 125 million players in Warzone since launch. Holy shit. 650 million Call of Duty mobile downloads globally since launch. Jesus Christ. That game's huge. Should you watch that trailer? Absolutely not. It was dog shit. Tune into Summer Game Fest tomorrow, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I think they're going to be streaming the first level um, from that. So just check it out there. The trailer they showed today was fucking boring. It was not worth it. Uh, we recorded it. We're not going to upload it to YouTube. It's up there on Twitch VODs if you want to watch it. Hey, The Quarry comes out this Friday and review scores are already in. Uh, if you're living in a shed, be careful out there. There's monsters. Also, The Quarry is the new game by Until Dawn Dev Supermassive Games. The review scores are Gaming Trend gives it a 95, GameSpot a 9, Game Informer an 8.5, VG247, 4 out of 5, Hardcore Gamer 3.5 out of 5. Apparently, Hardcore Gamers don't like it. The Open Critic is currently sitting in an 81 at time of recording with 27 critics, and the Metacritic in an 82 with 25 critics reporting in. That's not all we have for you as far as review scores go. Mario Strikers Battle League has come out, and it's kind of reviewing okay. IGN gives it an 8, Destructoid an 8, uh, Dexerto an 8, Game Informer 7.5, GameSpot 7, Inverse 7, VGC a 3 out of 5, Screen Rant a 3.5 out of 5, Open Critic currently sitting at a 77 with 6 critics, Metacritic a 75 with 34 critics counting in. For me, I'll probably check out uh, the, the Mario's. I might wait for the multiplayer to hit the, uh, the other game because it's delayed until I think early July when that stuff hits. But hey, we'll see. GameStop employees decided to walk out of a Nebraska store and never return. They are tired of, quote, we regret to inform you that we all quit. Piece of paper taped to the front. I think my editor messed that up. Anyways, they, they put a piece of paper taped to the front of the door. Uh, it was shared via a photo on the Lincoln subreddit later that day. It continues and says, quote, our district manager has no respect for us as employees or human beings. Oh God. We have been told by our district manager that we were supposed to have had this store achieving sales quotas and runnings perfectly six months ago, which was three months before a lot of us even got hired. Unfortunately, despite the staff's best efforts, we are not God. Paper then listed nearby competitors, including a place called Entertainment, located somewhere in the mall, and told would-be customers to shop there instead. Quote, spend your money at an establishment that respects its employees. Yeah, sounds about right. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney has called out a cryptocurrency scam trying to cash in on the popularity of his company's flagship game, Fortnite. Yesterday, Sweeney replied to several tweets posted by an account named Fortnite Token over the past few months, each time with a variation of this is a scam. Reports stated that the account was started at the end of 2021. Sweeney later posted, quote, there isn't a Fortnite cryptocurrency. The Twitter accounts, uh, that was, it says pruding. I don't think pruding is a verb. I'm going to go with the Twitter accounts 
posting such a thing are a scam. That's fub, man. That's super fub. Uh, Epic's lawyers are on it. Also, shame on the cryptocurrency marketplaces that enable this kind of thing, he says. The Fortnite token account replied to one of Twe uh, Sweeney's messages stating, instead, this is a fair launch, community-driven Fortnite game fans created cryptocurrency project. Jesus, he just it, like hit on every buzzword. With no specified owner or company structure behind it or a CEO deciding on its future. To which Sweeney responded, that's not how trademarks and copyright uh, works, though. You can't use the Fortnite name and images without permission to market an unrelated product. He's right. Hideo Kojima is working on a horror game titled Overdose, starring actress Mar um, Mar Margaret? 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 Let's go with that. Quali, uh, the girl that played Mama in Death Stranding. Uh, the game is playable in third and first person according to this rumor and reliable industry insider tom henderson claims to have received an early footage of the game featuring quali an image partially revealed a logo for overdose also appears to have leaked if any of that needs any confirmation i believe an update to the story that i saw this morning was that kojima uh pictures or whatever his company's called reached out and said take this shit down that's a great way to confirm a rumor in my opinion We'll see if it pops up at Summer Game Fest tomorrow. Nintendo is reportedly sitting on a sequel to One to Switch, which has a game show-like theme and could support up to 100 players. That's according to a new Fanbyte report citing multiple sources with knowledge of the project, which is called Everybody's One to Switch. <laughs> the reports also state uh, that the game includes more mini games, has smartphone games in the manner of Jackbox with up to 100 players, and received negative feedback from playtest. Quotes from their report in regards to the playtest are as follows. Quote, but no one expected everybody's one to switch to test quite as badly as it did. Different trusted employees within Nintendo were raising alarms that the game released as is would damage the company's reputation as a great software developer. Jesus, that's kind of grim, a little bit dramatic. Do I think any of that's real? Could be, I don't know. Will we see any of that tomorrow? Probably not. There's another rumor floating around that I saw this morning. My editor did not happen to find it, but I got to take a deep breath because this is a long explanation. There was an email sent to a content creator from a publisher and in it, or sorry, from a developer for an indie game and the developer of the indie game signed an NDA, but the NDA said that he couldn't talk about the other games that would be showing up at this Nintendo Direct but he could talk about his own. So he did with this content creator in an email. And then this content creator went onto a subreddit and leaked said email. And thus this confirms that there's probably gonna be a Nintendo Direct most likely next Wednesday. Will it actually happen? I don't know, but I could just say that a Nintendo Direct is gonna happen in the future. Then it's pretty likely, right? That confirmer, it's, it's confirmed. You can confirm that rumor, right? Because eventually it's gonna occur. We'll be covering it regardless of whenever it happens, uh, most likely next Wednesday, but we'll see what happens with that. That's gonna do it for JPNN. Once again, apologize. Uh, we apologize for the clickbait on Monday. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Probably be back tomorrow with another episode after Summer Game Fest, maybe going through all the different announcements. Uh, we'll just have to see. We'll definitely be back Friday though uh, for more JPNN. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're out of here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.